Hey there everybody, thank you for clicking on the video. Today we're gonna check out some videos from Curiosity Plus. Check out their YouTube channel. I'll put their link on the description below. Let's begin. What if I tell you there is a place in India where you will witness the most bizarre phenomenon in the world? Jatinga is a small village in the state of Assam, which is filled with lush greenery and natural beauty. But there is a frightening thing about this location which has baffled scientists for centuries. Between the months of September to November every year, groups of birds come here and commit suicide. Yes, you heard that right. This is known as the mass bird suicide in Jatinga, and it is not witnessed anywhere else in the world. And the really strange thing is, all this happens at night. Local birds as well as migratory birds suddenly start to fly during night and go directly crashing into houses and trees, causing their own deaths. No one has been able to find out the real reason behind this shocking phenomenon. The locals believe that the village is haunted by evil spirits which cause these mass killings. So tell me, what do you think about it? It's similar to that place in Scotland. I think they call it a suicide bridge. The dogs come and they jump off the bridge apparently. It could be evil spirits. It could be magnetic fields. Some things are just hard or can never be explained it's bad bird juju that's what it is what if i tell you that there is a form of exercise which is extremely simple yet so powerful that it can make your mind a hundred times stronger from thousands of years the ancient indian seers were developing various techniques to master the mind and body to a superhuman level india is that sacred land where the art of yoga was born but there is a very simple exercise which can give you amazing abilities if practiced properly. Trataka is a powerful technique to control the mind and body. In this exercise, a practitioner steadies his gaze on a point without blinking his eyes for as long as he can comfortably. Practitioners claim that they get extraordinary physical, mental, and psychic benefits from this exercise. One of those benefits is the superhuman ability to concentrate the mind on a single subject for as long as one wishes. Let me know in the comments if you want to learn more about it. I do want to learn more about it. Plus a good exercise regime. Nowadays getting harder and harder to concentrate with all the distractions going on in the world. So many distractions, you got Netflix, the internet. I'll look into that. This two million years old mysterious Hindu text which describes gravity and other astronomical concepts. Researchers believe that the ancient Indian text, Surya Siddhanta, was written in the fourth or the fifth century CE. But shockingly, the second verse of the first chapter of this book attributes all the words to a messenger of the sun god who came to planet Earth to teach an asura named Mayasura millions of years ago. The text is filled with rich astronomical knowledge and you will be astonished to know that it calculates the time taken by Earth to complete an orbit around the sun to be exactly 365 days, 6 hours, 12 minutes and 36.56 seconds. This is such a mind-bending calculation for any ancient text written by people even thousand of years ago but why did the author credit the knowledge presented in the book to an otherworldly being? So, is it not possible that this book is really millions of years old? Millions of years old. Let's check on Google what he has to say about this. While our ancestors have been around for about six million years, the modern form of humans only evolved at about 200,000 years. Civilization as we know it is only about 6,000 years old. But you know, in ancient times, when people really didn't have that much distractions, you know, they'd sit and watch the stars. That's one way of being able to tell that there is this much days in a year, you know, with the coming of seasons and everything. So it's not very unlikely. What if I tell you that the sages of ancient India were scientifically more advanced than what we can imagine? Many people think it was Charles Darwin who had first thought about the theory of evolution, but the Vedic seers were in fact much ahead of him. For example, 
How can you describe the remarkable similarity between the ten avatars or incarnations of Lord Vishnu and the evolution of human beings on this planet? The ancient Indians had first described evolution. Even though we have not yet reached those stages, it is a great evidence to suggest that human civilizations evolve in cycles or yugas, and the Vedic seers belong to the previous advanced civilization. The first incarnation of Lord Vishnu is a fish, indicating that life began in water. The second is a tortoise, which is an amphibian. The third is a boar, which is a terrestrial animal. The fourth is half lion, half human, indicating the transition from animals. The next is of a mana, indicating primitive humans. The sixth is Parishurama, indicating barbaric humans. The seventh is Rama, a highly civilized being. The eighth is Krishna. Do you know that in ancient India, there existed a group of women who could kill you just by a kiss? Yes, you heard that right. These women were known as Vishakanyas or poison damsels. They were trained from their very childhood to become lethal killers. Appropriate amounts of poisons and antidotes were given to them for years to make their bodies immune to any kind of toxic substance. In an ancient political treatise, Arthashastra, its author Chanakya writes that these women were employed by kings to eliminate their political rivals and enemy kings. A Vishakanya would first entice her target through her beauty and charms. She would hold some poisonous liquid in her mouth and transfer that into her target's body through a kiss. Now her job is done. The unsuspecting target would eventually die without ever realizing how. This is surely the cruelest way to end someone's life. Have you ever seen this symbol? I bet you have if you've been to a clinic in the US or in India. This is known as the caduceus symbol in which two snakes are often depicted rising on a winged staff. It is the most frequently used symbol among ancient cults, secret societies, and occultists. But what is it doing on the emblems of the United States Medical Corps, major public health services, and even the U.S. military's medical department? Apparently, no one knows the real reason. Websites like Wikipedia simply term it as a mistake on the part of the medical departments. But my question is, why keep a mistake for over a century? It is in fact not as simple as it looks. This symbol is inspired by the depictions of kundalini energy in ancient Hindu traditions. The ancient Indians believe that there is a powerful center of energy at the base of your spine. When properly activated, this rises to the brain, and the human can get extraordinary abilities. The Hermetics were greatly influenced by this concept, and as it turns out, the US is doing some serious research on this topic. Have you ever seen this symbol? I bet you have if you've been to a clinic in the US or in India. This is known as the caduceus symbol in which two snakes are often depicted rising on a winged staff. It is the most frequently used symbol among ancient cults, secret societies, and occultists. But what is it doing on the emblems of the United States Medical Corps, major public health services, and even the U.S. military's medical department? Apparently, no one knows the real reason. Websites like Wikipedia simply term it as a mistake on the part of the medical departments. But my question is, why keep a mistake for over a century? It is in fact not as simple as it looks. This symbol is inspired by the depictions of kundalini energy in ancient Hindu traditions. The ancient Indians believe that there is a powerful center of energy at the base of your spine. When properly activated, this rises to the brain, and the human can get extraordinary abilities. The Hermetics were greatly influenced by this concept, and as it turns out... I kind of believe that. I won't be surprised if uh, Stanley's multiverse or the Marvel Universe, the MCU, if it was inspired by these sacred texts. I like it that Krishna being the supreme soul of the universe comes across very human. The distant past of mankind is not as simple as it looks. The ancient Indians have left us with some intriguing and puzzling accounts of the past, which forces us to view our history in a completely new light. In ancient Hindu texts, we find descriptions of many intergalactic wars which were fought between various advanced civilizations. Even planet Earth is depicted as some kind of base for these civilizations. For example, the Padma Purana, an ancient text written by Vyasa, who is also believed to be half human and half reptilian. Half reptilian, surprise, surprise. That there are about 400,000 intelligent humanoid species in the known universe. Some of these include the Nagas, the Devas, the Asuras, the Vanaras, the Gandharvas, the Navata Kavachas, and many more. These races of beings played a crucial role in shaping the current human civilization. Except for the Venaras, all the other creatures are thought to be of extraterrestrial origin. No other civilization has such detailed encyclopedia about these planetary beings, except the ancient Hindu texts. This powerful mantra can bring the dead back to life. There lived a sage and his wife in ancient India, who were not able to conceive a child. 
After doing long and hard penance to Lord Shiva, they were blessed with a boy, but their happiness soon faded away as they found that the boy would die in his teenage. When the boy grew to the age of 16, his parents told him about his upcoming death and advised him to pray to Lord Shiva. Pleased with the boy's devotion, Lord Shiva appeared before him and gave him a very powerful mantra. By the correct chanting of this mantra, a person can avoid untimely death and attain health and longevity. This mantra is called the Mahamrityunjaya Mantra, and many scholars believe its correct pronunciation is still a mystery. Various scientific studies have shown that the chanting of mantras has powerful effects on the brain and energy centers of a person. Prayers and mantras are very similar in a lot of ways. It's simply just a way to connect and communicate with the divine. It's true that there's power in words, more so in, in faith and belief. Was it really possible in ancient India? The study of sound and vibrations has always fascinated scientists for centuries. For example, a researcher named Anthony Holland recently showed that cancerous cells could be completely destroyed by targeting them with certain frequencies of sound. But you will be surprised to know that the seers or scientists from ancient India were using sounds or mantras to cure many diseases. The ancient Vedic seers had understood the importance of sound vibrations in achieving multiple extraordinary feats. One of the most intriguing thing about this culture is that each of their gods is always shown with a musical instrument. This shows how advanced the ancient Indians were in their knowledge of sound frequencies and its applications in scientific and spiritual fields. Various ancient texts suggest that they performed miracles like levitation and invisibility by using mantras or sound frequencies. The Hindu texts also say that the universe is a manifestation of sound and we can gain extraordinary power. Even in the pyramids, they say they use sonic vibrations to lift those big blocks up. What if I tell you that the sages of ancient India had found the process of gaining complete control over evolution of a human being? The ancient sages had understood that a human being is not an ordinary creature, and they sought to develop it through various practices, which we now know as yoga. There are various forms of yoga, and the most sophisticated and secretly hidden among them is the Kundalini Yoga. The sages of ancient India believed that there is a great amount of energy stored at the base of the spine of a human being. They called this energy as the Kundalini Shakti and devised methods to awaken it from sleep. Once awakened within a human body, it wrecks havoc if the practitioner is not sufficiently prepared. Therefore, it is advisable to practice this powerful yoga with adequate preparation. After the Kundalini Shakti is awakened, the task of the practitioner is to guide this energy to his brain and voluntarily complete his evolution. In this process, the practitioner gets many superhuman and extraordinary capabilities. Noise. <laughs> I do want to learn more of that practice though. In this video, I am going to share with you some amazing facts about a powerful weapon mentioned in many ancient Hindu texts, which will make you rethink about the history of human civilization. In fact, the ancient Indian texts talk about powerful beings who came from the skies, as well as beings who dwelt under the sea. And there was a weapon so powerful that various advanced civilizations would compete against each other to get it. This weapon was called Brahmastra. It is the most powerful weapon mentioned among all the ancient texts in the world. The weapon was so powerful that it could wipe out all life forms from this planet. No one could stop it. And the most shocking thing is, the operator could lock a target for the weapon to hit, much like how our modern missiles work. It is astonishing how people thousands of years ago described these weapons and their effects, which resemble our modern-day nuclear warheads. So, could it be possible that these weapons really existed at that time? Possibly. This powerful practice can give you the ability to completely wake up from the matrix. Almost all ancient traditions have emphasized that our consciousness is trapped in the illusion of the world. Have you seen the movie The Matrix? This sci-fi blockbuster was inspired by ancient Indian texts, such as the Vedas and the Upanishads. The ancient researchers were far ahead of us when it came to understanding the true nature of reality. Our modern scientists are trying to understand matter but the ancient Indians studied the human consciousness, which is way more important in our evolution as an advanced species. There is a practice known as dream yoga, in which you can learn to consciously control your dreams while still remaining within them. It is widely practiced among Buddhist monks, 
especially in Tibet. Mastery in this practice can bestow your mind with amazing clarity and even the power to manipulate and change external reality. It's like you gain power over the matrix, just like Neo in the movie. Tell me if you want to learn more about this practice. These are ancient techniques that people can learn. It's the age of information and all of this is probably you can find it all up in the internet. Yeah, why not? But I do believe you have a whole universe inside your head, so it could get real confusing and real chaotic. And I think a lot of it has to do with uh, mental conditioning. We've been subjected to conditioning since we were born. I mean, conditioning from our parents, from the family, from the institution, from the government. To be able to deprogram oneself and figure out the realities in this world is yeah it's not gonna be an easy task you know? anyway that's it for now i'll see you guys in the next one